Overbooking the circuits is one of the ideas behind packet networks. Another one has to do with the idea of not allowing people to sort of connect for a certain period of time and use the network and then disconnect and have all sorts of different chunks of data being transmitted. The idea is to make everybody transmit the same size chunks of data. And if you think about this, let's think of an example uh, using the postal system. I could take this book and I think I have to put scotch tape here and there to conform to postal regulations, but I could take this book and I could scribble in handwriting an address on the back and put some stamps on here and throw it in a box on the street and the postal service would deliver it for me. I could take my briefcase and put a mailing label and some stamps on it and throw it in a box on the street and they'd probably deliver it. Can you imagine how much trouble this causes people have to design sorting and transmission systems at the post office? They have to handle postcards this big and briefcases in the same letter reading machines and canvas bags and trucks. It'd be enough to make somebody go postal. Now what would you say if the post office came up with a proposal and they said we are going to drop, not raise, but drop the price of a first class stamp to six cents. And you're only allowed to transmit one page of paper per envelope. But six cents, still sound like a good idea? Well, I don't know, I haven't figured out the, the statistics yet, but regardless of whether it's a good idea or not, my requirement isn't to transmit individual pages of paper, my requirement is to transmit these big random sized files. And the post office says no problem, just use more envelopes. And what you need is a box called a packet assembler disassembler. And what this box is going to do is take your big file and start grabbing standard size chunks of data out of the file. And so it'll open up your file and take the first standard size chunk of data out of there, fold it up, and then put it in a network envelope. And write the network address in the front, and then it'll take the next chunk of data and it'll end up assembling your file into a whole bunch of packets, each with a network address in the front, and we put a big rubber band around there, and we throw this in a mailbox, and then at five o'clock somebody comes along and empties it into a canvas bag, and then they drive it to a sorting station and dump the contents of the canvas bag onto a conveyor belt, and our bundle of 75 envelopes arrives at the first sorting station, the first network node, the first router, whatever you want to call it. What happens to our bundle of 75 envelopes at that point? Well, they take the rubber band off and then drop them on the floor, bend down, pick up all 62 envelopes, except the ones that slipped underneath the sorting stand. Now picture this, you're the mailroom clerk at the receiver. Four days later, the first 18 envelopes arrive. And over the next week or so, the rest of them percolate in, except a bunch that are missing, but you don't know that. What do you do? Start opening the envelopes and looking, trying to find page numbers to figure out what's going on? No. You're the mailroom clerk. You're not allowed to open the envelopes. And even if you did, there's no reason to believe that there would be page numbers. So clearly, in addition to having the network address, we'd like to also have some control information visible at the network level so that the mailroom can resequence them, notice that some are missing, and unbeknownst to the user, call up and get the ones that are missing retransmitted. And then once they've got all of the envelopes, they feed them through a packet disassembler, and it grabs the data out of the packet and then throws the envelope away. We don't need it anymore. And it reassembles these chunks of data until we've reconstructed the whole file at the far end. What we ended up doing was transmitting this thing through a system that only handles these. 
And this is what a packet switched service from the phone company is all about. Let's think of an example where this could be used. An easy example would be doing credit card authorizations at a gas station. Here's a graphic and on the right side we've got the gasoline station and they've got a bunch of different computers like a point of sale terminal and a lottery terminal and an inventory system and things like that and they're connected via a premise router onto a packet network built by the phone company. On the left side, we've got the bank's payment processing division. Then when somebody wants to do a credit authorization at the gas station, they swipe the card, punch in the amount of purchase, press send, and a packet goes over the access circuit and gets routed from one router to another and delivered to the bank. This is good, because compare that to the dial-up connection where you would swipe the card, punch in the amount of purchase, press send, and then you'd wait while the modem went off hook and went beep, 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 beep to make a circuit switched connection to the bank. And then the two modems went sh 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 to negotiate. And then you transmitted the data and got an answer back and the bank hung up on you. Here, we've eliminated the delay setting up the circuit because all we do is send a packet into the network and it gets routed and delivered right away. Now that's good, but it gets even better. Have you ever noticed that gasoline stations come in clusters? If there's an X on here, there's going to be a shell across the street. So what's going to happen, a credit authorization is going to start here and go in the access circuit to the bank and then the gasoline station across the street is going to do a credit authorization and cause a packet to go into the bank. So we're getting packets going interspersed one after another down the access circuit to the bank. Or if you want to turn it around, the bank is talking to those two gas stations at the same time over one access circuit. With some of the technologies we're going to look at, you can talk to 4,095 people at the same time over one access circuit. And this is a huge advantage. Compare that to dial-up circuit switching. If you wanted to talk to 4,095 people at the same time, how many access circuits would you need? How many phone lines would you have to get? Well, 4,095. How many modems would you have to buy? 4,095. How many serial ports would you need to plug these into your computer? 4,095. Here with packet switching, you just need one. And it's pay per access circuit in this business. So there are huge cost advantages. Another advantage of packet switching or bandwidth on demand services is the way it's priced. You have to pay for the access at each end a flat rate per month. But the network connection is not per month, it's not per mile, it's not per minute, in theory, it's per packet. Now, this is a good idea for users because most of the time you're going to be doing nothing. And if we're paying based on transmitting packets, how many we've sent, and most of the time you're doing nothing, then it's going to be cheaper than pay all the time, which is what a dedicated line is. It's also a good idea for the service provider because knowing that their customers normally aren't actually going to be transmitting packets, they're going to be doing nothing most of the time, they can connect lots of people onto this network, tell them they've all got a full speed connection, and just pray they don't all try to use it at the same time. Everything is going to happen this way. Certainly data services all happen this way, and voice and video are all going to happen this way as well. The world's most popular standard for packets and packet networks is IP. With IP, the routing for each packet is calculated for every packet on every router all the way across. There are some reasons why this was done and we'll understand them in the internet chapter but we could probably think of some improvements on the idea of routing every packet on every router in the entire chain all the way across.